Have you ever built a Luster file system? Here's some life advice, don't do it. Life is far too short to spend any of it standing in a data center inventing new four letter cuss words to describe the way you feel about the sudden failure of a battery backed write cache card that just pegged it and took out your metadata servers right when you were just about to commission the thing after months of tedious builds. No, you're nicer than that or you wouldn't be watching this channel. Now, today my buddy Randy from the AWS High Performance Storage team is going to show you, well he's going to show off, how to build a one terabyte per second Lustre file system and pelt it with I.O. until it does what it says on the lid. Let's get cracking. A service in, in AWS called FSX for Lustre, where we take away all of the uh, headache of a Lustre environment and actually give you quite a few advantages over a traditional Lustre environment. So uh, when you select create FSX file system here at AWS, we have several of these FSX file systems, best of breed file systems. Uh, uh, FSX for NetApp ONTAP is one of them, very popular. Uh, ZFS, you may be familiar with that. Uh, of course, the Windows ever ubiquitous Windows file server as well. That's a managed environment. And we have Amazon FSX for Lustre, which is what we're interested in today. So we'll go ahead and start the build for one of those. And as we uh, as we do that, we have a little notice up here at the top that, hey, do you happen to know that uh, you can compress data with Lustre? And that's, by the way, LZ4 compression, which can get up to 50% or so of compression if the data type is right. Of course, you know, your mileage will vary on uh, the type of compression you'll get. Now, I will say this, uh, usually you think compression, you think, uh, well, I don't know if I wanna use that in terms of uh, my performance profile, but this one, the compression rides along for free because we have such a, a very powerful resource uh, in EC2 that we're actually leveraging to run uh, this luster. Yep, so that's right, folks. The compression doesn't cost money and doesn't penalize you on performance. When you build a storage filer, you usually go for cheapish CPUs in the file headers because, well, you want to put more bucks into the storage bits where it matters. But our cheapish CPUs are AWS Gravitons, and they're speedy little buggers that we use for HPC because they're insanely fast. So you put those together, and that means we can put on the fly compression into our luster nodes for nothing extra at all. So without further ado, uh, let's actually build our file system. So we'll call this SC23 uh, uh, after the uh, Supercomputing 23, where I demoed this on, uh, live, uh, Luster. And uh, this is where we get into the different types. So uh, when you're on-prem, you have to you know figure out what type of Luster configuration you want to run and build that. Maybe uh, you have some different Luster environments you want. One's scratch, one's persistent, so on and so forth. We provided all that for you here. So the type we're going to build today is a persistent SSD-based Luster file system, and you can choose here uh, the performance density. And by performance density, we mean depending on which type of storage you chose, scratch, persistent, SSD, or HDD, you get some choices that relate to how many spindles you get for different storage volume sizes. We can do that in the design phase here because we're using Amazon EC2 in the back, which has different sizes and varieties of nearly everything. That makes it easy to choose how much storage performance you want to get for every unit of storage capacity you're buying. That's actually right. So, uh, you know, if I'm going to pick a thousand megabytes per terabyte. And, and our goal here today is to create one terabyte a second. Uh, and so in order to do that, if I have 1000 megabytes per terabyte, I'm going to need a petabyte of storage. So I'm kind of nice little round number there, a petabyte of storage and a, a terabyte a second of, of IO. So that's an easy configuration. Uh, there, you can also build, uh, if you if you don't need the absolute uh, lowest latency performance, you can also build it with HDD or drives, which will uh, be much more cost efficient. And uh, you can enable or disable an SSD caching if you have uh, some smaller blocks and some metadata. That would be nice. Uh, and we also give the option to create what is a scratch, traditional HPC scratch file system as well, which is even lower cost. And it comes in at 200 megabytes a second per terabyte. Hi. Um, if you're enjoying this, can you click that like button it seriously it'll just take you like one second not even that and if you really like it click on the subscribe button over there we'll let you know next time we make something pretty easy right yeah okay back to the show we're going to create this guy persistent ssd which in our land is actually called persistent to a uh, lesser type of file system so i'm going to enter in a a number here and i believe it's 010 let's see if it was perfect 
If you notice, it says, ah, you got to build a little bit more. Yeah, I know that that one's actually an even multiple, and it, it gives me a little, little extra room there. But I could, ah, so that's going to give me my one terabyte a second here. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, LZ4, uh, you know, uh, for this, I turned off compression because I didn't want to cheat on the uh, perform on the throughput performance. So it's right. actually moving a terabyte a second of data, not yielding a terabyte a second after decompress. Uh, after expansion of the compressed data. So, yep, that's right, folks. The compression doesn't cost money and doesn't penalize you on performance. When you build a storage finder, you usually go for cheapish CPUs in the file headers because, well, you want to put more bucks into the storage bits where it matters. But our cheapish CPUs are AWS Gravitons, and they're speedy little buggers that we use for HPC because they're insanely fast. So you put those together, and that means we can put on-the-fly compression into our luster nodes for nothing extra at all. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the AWS, you know you have a VPC, which we're going to use my default VPC here, and you have a security group, and you have a subnet. Now, the subnet is where you actually are going to define where this FSx for Lustre lives. Next up, encryption. These uh, file systems are always encrypted. You can use your own encryption key if, uh, if you prefer. Uh, I don't really care. Uh, now, I want to talk a little bit about the data repository. So data repository are S3 buckets or S3 prefixes. And these things allow you to import and export data into or out of the Lustre file system. Uh, so you can have a, a, a data lake of S3 and just grab that and bring it all in. And so that's done by selecting an S3 bucket. And I happen to have an S3 bucket that just is handy. It's called SC benchmark. All right, so that's my S3 bucket. And where should that bucket be mounted? I'm going to mount it as uh, off the root as FIO. Now, how we keep up with that data repository, you can actually push changes out to that repository. You can pull in uh, new files that uh, happen to be in that repository. Let's say that I'm uh, running here and someone drops another work, a set of workloads into my S3 bucket. Uh, you can automatically import those to the to the uh, repot from the repository. So I'm not going to I'm not going to turn those on uh, for this environment. And likewise, you can also any changes that you make to your Lustre environment, you can also export those uh, back to the S3 bucket. And uh, you can also plan what time that your Lustre environment it has a, a software upgrade. We don't always do software upgrades, but when we do, we do them at your plan time if you wish. So, uh, you know, the thing that you would normally do on premise, uh, we, we do all of that uh, heavy lifting for you. You know, seriously, for anybody who has ever built a Lustre cluster by hand, right? And I used to do that uh, for a living. Uh, may, at first, may somebody have mercy on your soul because it's just a horrible thing to have to do. But seriously, we're going to get to the next button here in a minute. And the entire discussion is going to have been a few minutes. This is going to be shorter than the first pre-brief meeting I would have with a customer where we discussed what they needed in a Lufter file system. <laughs> and that's a good six to eight months before we would be deploying the Lustre file system for them. You so. just click next. Gives you the screen, which it does on all FSX environments, is a handy dandy reminder of what you can change on the fly after the file system has been built versus what you cannot. So if you scroll down through here, you can see that uh, you can't change the media type or the, uh, the, the build type of the FSX file system. You can change the storage capacity, the throughput, uh, the compression type. And that's pretty much it. Uh, once you do that, you just create, uh, just tap the magic button and you're off to the races. How long is that going to take us? Your mileage will vary a bit. My build that I did for supercomputing was well under an hour. But having said that, um, so on that, on that day when I'm out there talking to a customer about their Lustre file system, we're only just getting settled in to the meeting room. Uh, <laughs> we're getting coffee. Um, and in about an hour from now, it's probably going to be lunchtime. Uh, but we're actually going to have, and, and we're going to go out to lunch to keep discussing the Lustre yeah. file system we're specking for them and that we're going to build. Um, but before we even go to lunch, this thing's going to be ready. Here we are uh, at a CloudWatch dashboard that I built for this FSX. We just kicked off the uh, workload. Uh, it, it, the workload is actually running on a, a little over 100 uh, EC2 instances 
that are connected with an uh, with about a hundred gigabyte, a hundred gigabit a second, or ten gigabytes a second, uh, and they are connected to Lustre file system. And I commanded them to run FIO, a mixed read and write workload of about one megabyte in size operations. For throughput, that's a fairly small block size. I know for enterprise, that's a humongous block size, but for uh, streaming workloads, that's fairly small block, one megabyte. Normal, isn't it? Yeah. So you see it's beginning to ramp up there. It takes it a while to, to get you know all 100 of these guys actually doing work. We do have even faster available uh, in terms of network throughput. Uh, the HPC 7A actually has 300 uh, gigabits a second of uh, connectivity, which is about 30 gigabytes a second. So you want to choose the right EC2 instance to match your throughput versus uh, compute uh, ratio. And look, magic it It's just cracked a terabyte a second. So just so that everybody gets what's going on here. So we've got a one terabyte per second cross-sectional bandwidth um, Lustre file system that's a petabyte of data behind it, of, of actual capacity, actual storage right. capacity. And you're pushing on that using the FIO benchmarking tool from 100 EC2 instances, that each of which have got 100 gigabit network adapters on them. Mm -hmm. using EFI. And so you're using 100 instances to pelt this file system. Because this is not actually tuned, right? But this is an example of out-of-the-box performance, not for luster tuning, right? That's another story that we can do, right? <laughs> right. This is crazy. Um, when we're done with this, how long does it take to tear the file system down when we're finished with it? You just click delete, uh, and it's pretty boring. It just says deleting file system. It takes maybe 20, 30 minutes or something like that for the, uh, something of this scope. Um, for anybody out there watching, Randy's actually got a blog post about this. And of course, anybody got any questions about FSX for Lustre or got any interest in building one of these things and wants to know more, you can reach out to us at askhpc at amazon.com. Oh, I've got to put in my plug too here. Can't get away without that. So if you go to LinkedIn, I'm, uh, I've am i got a nice little vanity handle. It's just storage performance. Uh, so you can follow me for more fun adventures in extreme storage performance. 